Hi, I'm Sean with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and in this video I'm going to talk about how to catch trout. Now I'm going to be filming this video in the state of Pennsylvania, but these techniques can be applied pretty much anywhere where you're going to fish for trout. I'm going to break this video into two main segments. The first half we're going to be fishing at a lake. The second half we're going to be fishing at streams. I will also mention that this video is focused on fishing for trout that are stocked. It's a very popular thing in Pennsylvania for people to go out and fish recreationally for stocked trout and there's plenty of other videos out there for fly fishing and fishing for native trout and things like that but this is going to be geared toward a lot of your weekend warriors and people who only get out a little bit trying to catch those stocked trout and the reason I'm making the video is because every year I go out and I see people who are not very successful and it's really because of the equipment they're using and the way they're setting up their equipment and the, the areas that they're fishing, it's not helping them achieve the goal of catching trout. So before I go any farther, I want to talk quickly about equipment. I'm wearing a, a fishing vest. This fishing vest is about 10 years old. I bought it for $25 when I, when I got it. So you don't need anything very expensive, but having a fishing vest is definitely helpful because it keeps all of the things you need right in hand's reach where you can get to it. One thing I recommend if you're really interested in getting into it is a pair of polarized sunglasses and polarized glasses help you see through the water a little bit and sometimes you're able to spot the fish which is going to help you fish for them. You can cast for them. This particular pair has the, um, the, the reddish tinted lens as opposed to the dark lens which I recommend because as in early morning and late evening it's a little easier to see with them when you're in those lower light situations. So um, a pair of sunglasses polarized sunglasses is helpful. Another thing I have hanging on my vest here, it's just a pair of fingernail clippers that I have tied on with a twisty tie. Very helpful because especially when you're fishing in streams, you're going to break um, your line a lot, getting caught on rocks and things like that. You're going to have to retie. So having the clippers handy is very helpful. Another thing I suggest picking up is a pair of hemostats. You can get them fairly inexpensively. You can clip them right onto your vest somewhere and they're really helpful if you happen to have a fish that really swallows the hook for reaching down in there and getting the hook out or sometimes the hook is in a reachable place but you know if you're using small hooks and your fingers are so big it's hard to get a hold of the hook to get it out and when we're fishing for trout very often we're going to be using smaller size hooks in fact while I'm mentioning it I typically I keep all my hooks in the same pocket so I know where to reach I generally use um, size 10 and size 12 hooks. Once in a while I'll, I'll, I might go to a different size but I'm going to walk up. These uh, The brand is Eagle Claw. It really doesn't matter. I also, since I'm fishing for bait, I like the kind that have bait hooks or bait barbs on the back of the hook. There's two little barbs that stick off and that helps hold your bait on the hook. If you don't have the bait barb, especially if you're fishing for worms, it'll slide down the hook and um, it affects your presentation. That's a huge word, presentation, because one of the things that helps you be more effective is the way you present your bait to the fish. Um, I use, uh, also use a file. I keep a small file in my vest because sometimes, especially if you're hitting rocks a lot with your hooks, um, they get dull. And so I just have a little file. I'm trying to get it out to show you. Here it is right here. You just slide your hook down the file two or three times and it sharpens it right up and it makes it easier to hook the fish. It's very frustrating when you're fishing and you're getting bites but you're not able to hook the fish and sometimes that can be because your hook is not sharp enough. Okay, now I want to talk about fishing rods, then I want to talk about setup, and then I want to get on the lake. So I have two fishing poles behind me. This first one is um, it's a six and a half foot pole and this is a medium to heavy action. I use this for bass fishing. I do not use this for trout fishing. The heavier action is good for your larger fish. Generally when you're fishing for trout, they're, they're typically quite small. And so what I prefer for trout is an ultra light or a light action rod that's very bendable. It makes it so much more fun when your rod's really bending and you're fighting the fish, even if it's a small fish. So with the stiff rod, it, you know, it's not as exciting. And um, that's really the main thing for me. But actually in this situation, <clears throat> since I'm going to be starting off at a lake, I'm going to use this bass fishing rod 
because it's longer and a longer rod will typically enable you to cast farther. That's the only reason I'm going to use it. It's just so I can get a little more castability in this situation. But other than that, even on lakes, most, in most situations, I will prefer my small ultralight rod. Another thing when it comes to the reel is this reel, you can't reel backwards at all. I've had old reels in the past where you can reel backwards and then it would click, you know. That's something to test out when you're, when you're looking at equipment. The reason I say that is when a fish bites, you have to set the hook. You have to give a little tug on the rod. And if there's a back reel in there, you're not getting a good hook set until it hits that back wall. And then the hook is going to get set in. But sometimes the fish can spit it out beforehand. So with a zero re reel backwards reeling reel, that hook set is immediate and it helps you get the hook in the fish and catch the fish. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is presentation. I want to show you the rig that I'm going to use at the lake. I also want to say this, if you watch my hunting videos, pretty much all of the hunting uh, experience that I have and knowledge is from my own effort in learning how to become a better hunter. When it comes to trout fishing though, I'm going to give all the credit to a friend of mine, John Ortlieb. He is a very good trout fisher as well as other fish and he has taught me some things about trout fishing that has significantly helped me catch more fish. This rig is something that John taught me and um, as far as I know he was planning on possibly even selling this you know packaging the rig and selling it like on the internet. If he ever decides to do that I will try to make sure I uh, provide a link for something like that. But when you're fishing for trout, they can be a very sensitive fish. And so the first thing he taught me was using a low resistance bobber. See how it's, it comes almost to a point here? This point, I mean, when the bobber goes down or the floats, whatever you want to call it, it is very difficult for the fish to detect that. When you have a big round bobber, there's a lot of force and resistance there. The fish can feel that as it begins to pull on the bait and it can spit it out. So a low resistance bobber. This one I had to order through the internet. Um, it's not something that's generally stocked in a lot of your local stores. So again, if, if John decides to package that and, and provide it, I will um, offer a link. Um, so the next step is um, putting a few split shots on the line, as you can probably see here, and then it comes down to the hook. Now I'm using, this is a size 10 hook. Uh, sometimes I use a size 12, which is smaller, but I'm going to be fishing with minnows. And so this size hook for me is, a, is the perfect size when you're fishing with small minnows for trout. And uh, I have the split shot spaced out a little bit so that it helps the line hang vertically in the water. The other thing I want to mention before we get into the fishing here is I have a uh, on this rod actually has eight pound test because this is my bass fishing rod but I have a two pound test leader which means all I did is I bought a spool of two pound test and I cut a section off about two and a half feet long and I attached it to the end here let me just step up so you can see hopefully see where the uh, lines come together now all I did in this scenario is I tied a loop knot at the end of each and then I simply put the loop knot through each other. I'll show you how to do that with large ropes so you can see it more easily. So you make a little loop and then you just take that and make a regular knot with it, stick it through there like that, and make sure it's not slipping. I did that with both. Now let me make a loop knot here real quick with, with this piece of twine. So pretend this is my two pound test leader and that green line is the, the regular line that goes to my spool. So I'm just making a loop knot like this and make sure it's not slipping. It's not. And then for the leader, you take your loop knot, the loop, and you stick it through here. And then you take the end of the line that you're going to tie to your hook and you put it through the loop here for uh, the slip knot you made on your leader. And then you pull it. And that's how I connected my two different lines for the rig that I have that I'm going to use on the lake. Normally what I do though is I tie a swivel to the end of the line that's connected to the rod and then I tie the two pound leader to the swivel. 
but I didn't have any in this situation, so I just did loop knots. So here I am, it's right at the first cast, and I got a fish on already. It's a nice little brook trout. Uh, yeah, like My wife has some friends in town for the weekend, so I decided to keep a few trout because they seemed interested in trying it. So I stick them on my stringer and as you're about to see I usually put a few sticks into the ground to uh, attach my stringer to if there's nothing else nearby to, to hook it onto. Now here's something I recommend. This little net right here for getting the minnows really helpful. If you have bug repellent or uh, sunscreen on your hands or anything like that. You can also contaminate the water if you were to reach in it with your hand. I've actually had bait die from that in the past. So I recommend the net not just for that because it makes it easier to get the minnows out. Now I'm not getting you a good angle here. I'll have to show you this again. My fingers are kind of way. But I'm hooking these minnows just behind the dorsal fin. Here let me show you that again. Different minnow. So you go just behind the dorsal fin through the side of the fish and with this rig, with the float rig, it allows the fish to swim freely. And as you can see I already have another fish on already. I actually got to the lake about an hour before opening cast. It was my first time going here so I was surprised to find out that most of the people in the area got there at 5 a.m. So there really wasn't hardly any spots left and I asked them if they minded if I squeezed in underneath of this tree here. So I had to kind of cast sidearm and, and hook set sidearm and reel them in kind of sidearm and things like that. But it didn't seem to matter. As long as I had the right presentation, which I obviously did, I was catching fish. And one of the things you may begin to notice as this video goes on is that I'm pulling in fish after fish, and the people around me, they kind of aren't. And it's because they're presenting their bait differently to the fish.
ever happen to miss a fish, like they, they bite it, but you don't get the hook set, I usually just let it set for a moment to see if the fish comes back around and bites again. As you can see right here, that's exactly what happened. I missed the first bite, let it set for a second, and it came back and hit again. I mean, sometimes you won't get another bite because your bait actually came off after the first miss. But I, like I said, I usually let it settle for a second and see if the fish bites again. And I just make that suggestion to you out there. If you ever, if you ever get a bite and you don't hook it, just, just let it set for a second and see if the fish comes back around. So as I mentioned, I'm pulling in fish after fish, and a lot of the people around me aren't really catching much. And if you'll notice, I never put my rod down. There's a lot of people who just put a weight on there and a hook, and they cast it out and just set the rod down on a stick and just wait for a fish to bite. I, I can't set my rod down because I'm, I'm getting too much action. And again, I'm just going to point this out. It's all in the presentation. It's all in how you present your bait to the fish. Obviously, I have the right setup here, and what eventually started to happen is people around me started to put a float on their line and and fish the way I was, but they were also casting in the same spot where I was at, which, you know, that can be a little bit annoying, but you got to be prepared for that because there's going to be people who are going to do that. I guess they don't realize that there's fish out in front of them just as they are in front of you, too. One of the other things I'll mention about fishing with minnows is you really got to get the timing just right w with setting the hook. I did miss a fair number of fish because I yanked a little too soon. You got to give it a split second if you're fishing with a float and you see the float go down. Normally if you're fishing with like a worm or something you, you pull up and try to set the hook immediately. But in, with the minnows I found that if I pulled immediately I would miss a lot and so you give it like a one second count, like the float would go down, one, then set the hook. And I'm just mentioning that to help you be more successful if you're fishing with minnows with a rig like this. Now I only had an hour to be at the lake and as I was getting close to the end of my hour, I was also getting close to the end of my minnows. So I started to give more and more to the to people next to me with the little boy to help them catch some fish and they they were doing really well the fish were biting them as, as soon as they would cast it out there and they had a float rig on by that point That's dinner right there. <laughs> now when it comes to fishing on the stream I'm going to be using my ultralight fishing rod and in that situation I'm going to use the same size hook the stream I'm going to be fishing is a very fast moving stream. I'm going to start off with the float rig just like I would use at the lake, but then I'm going to switch later on and take the float off and just bounce the bait along the bottom. And um, so again, it's all in presenting your bait to the fish. One of the drawbacks to letting your bait bounce along the bottom is that sometimes your line can get pulled in the water and it's pulling, it's dragging the bait along which makes it look like a less natural presentation. Another thing I want to suggest too when it comes to that two pound test leader the reason for that is that fish or trout can be fairly finicky I mean especially native trout and so they're going to reject um, when they see something strange a lot of times they're going to reject it. 
Now stocked fish are a little easier to catch because they're used to having pellets thrown at them to feed them, to raise them. So when you take that stocked trout and you let it out there in the stream for a while, it can start to act like more of an, a natural native trout and it's going to reject things that look strange. With that being said, I discourage using setups and I see it all the time where you tie a swivel to the end of your line and then you buy those packages of hooks that have that long leader on it, like a foot long. Usually that leader is like 15 pound test, maybe 20 pound test. And that is, is so noticeable to the fish that they're gonna reject it. Another thing I wanna mention with, now that I've said that is setting your drag properly. I'm trying to get my, my line got a little bit uh, twisted up here. All right, so when I'm setting my drag I, and I have a two pound test leader, I want to pull it off fairly easily. The reason for that is if I have a good sized fish on there, I'm going to need to let the fish run with the line so that my two pound test leader does not break. So you really have to play with the fish a little bit more. You can't just muscle it in. So let's get on the stream. One of the things I like to do is I like to feed my bait onto the hook so that it completely covers the hook as you can see here. And that way too, when the fish bites the food, my hook's going to be completely in its mouth. So keep that in mind when you're baiting your hook. Try to keep it so that your bait completely covers the hook if possible. Got one on. Looks like a decent fish. the other things I look for when I'm stream fishing is blown down logs and this is a trick that my friend John Ortlieb taught me years ago. We used to walk upstream from where the fish were stocked and look for blown down trees. We would then let our bait drift underneath the log and we would catch so many fish. Again here's another nice setup similar to what I just was doing and with this the way the tree is growing out over the stream on the other side to the left, there's a calm spot where the fish can just hide right down behind the tree in that calm spot. And I'm trying to get my bait to drift into that. I didn't catch any fish on this particular time, but again, this is a real effective approach for you to try. Another great thing to look for is where two streams come together like this. And I was really excited when I came upon this. I didn't even know this was here because I hadn't fished this section of stream before. So I immediately start working the whole area and one of the first things I did is I saw that it got real deep over where the smaller stream came into the bigger one. So I went over and started fishing that deep little hole right there. As you can see, I was successful. Well folks, I hope you both enjoyed and appreciated this video. I work really hard to provide helpful information to people in the outdoors, both in fishing and in hunting. If you like what you saw, please consider helping me out by subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos. Especially share, I'm trying to really build up my subscriber base. So I appreciate all the support you give, and I hope you stay tuned to my videos in the future. Until next time, take care, and God bless you.